So you want to get started ranching. And by looking at the thumbnail, you think I'm going to tell you that it takes money, which it does. And if you got it, that solves the problem. That helps a lot. We're done. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. But what if I told you that there's other ways to do it? And I'm not talking about marrying the rancher's daughter. Because first off, you got to do it for the right reasons. And if you don't love her, then it's not going to work out. But what I'm talking about is talking. Yeah, I said it. Talking. Um, that's one of the main tools that you can use to get started ranching. It'll take a little bit of money. It'll take a whole lot of time. Um, but you can take the steps to get started just by talking. That's all it takes is talking. Nowadays, it takes a whole lot of money to get started ranching in their traditional sense. And if you're like me, you don't have a whole lot of money just laying around spare to use. And you hear, go buy a ranch, go buy the land, go buy the cows, go buy the equipment. And somehow after all of that, you've got to make the cows that you just bought pay for all of that. But instead of buying the land and buying the cows and buying the equipment, how about you lease the land, buy the cows and rent the equipment? As you can tell, this ain't like my normal videos. Uh, today I'm in Central Texas and we are just going through getting out at the tail end of Storm Landon. And um, I came down, put some hay out, checked the cows, and that's about all I could do today um, because of the snow and, and the mud and everything. Um, so it's been one of them days where you kind of just work and do the little projects around the house, do the projects in the shop that you can get done and roll with it. But anyway, getting out and making contacts, talking to people, that's something anybody can do. And if getting started ranching is your dream, that's one of the first steps you need to do. So the first step that I would take is I would go sit down have a meeting, talk with your local extension agent. Um, down here in Texas, um, every county has one. My dad was actually an extension agent for several years out in West Texas. So just talk to them, you know, tell them your plans, tell them your goals, tell them what you want to do, what you're looking for. Um, he or she, the extension agent, probably knows almost everybody in that county. Uh, as far as the ranchers, the producers, and stuff like that. So let them know. Make an impact on them where they're, they're going to remember you and remember, hey, this guy or girl's got to drive. This is their passion. This is something they really want to do. And they're going to be able to answer a lot of questions for you. Um, like, how much is, is lease land going for right now? Um, how are they paying for lease land? Is it by the acre or are you paying by the head of how many cows you're running on the lease land? Um, that's something they're going to know and they'll be able to answer for you. Um, come up with a list of stuff. Write it down and when you go in and talk to them, you know, ask them those questions. If they don't know them, they can get in contact with somebody that does know them. And then the next thing I would do is I'd go online, look up where your local auction barn is, your livestock auction, um, and see what days they're having it and see where it's at in your local area. Then it's just as simple as going to the sale, you know, go in and watch what they're doing, um, listen to what they're doing, see how things are running. Watch the prices, watch what people are buying, watch what people are selling. Um, most of the livestock auctions are weekly, so go every week if you can. And then just go up and introduce yourself to the order buyers, to the auctioneer, to the owner of the sale barn. Um, and do the same thing with them. Let them know who you are and, and what your dreams are, what your goals are. And you'll find out real fast how 
how the majority of people in this industry are willing to bend over backwards to help you out. Um, um, just listen to these people, you know. You'll, you'll find out that most of these people at the cell barn are doing exactly what it is you want to do. So soak it up, be a sponge, listen to everything they say, and learn from everybody you can. Um, if you're able to, work the cell barn. You know, offer to do it for free. Go back there and say, hey, you know, I want to learn. I need to learn. Um, do you have an opening where I could come in? You don't have to pay me. It'll be totally free. I just want to use it as a learning experience. And there, most cell barns are usually always looking for somebody to work in the back, to push up the cows, to sort the cows, to pin the cows, to load the cows. Um, they're usually always work, looking for somebody. And I will say it again, work for free. Do not do it to get paid, okay? Use it as a learning experience. Give them more than what you, you're getting in return. You know what I'm saying? Like, show them that this is your passion. And you'll be surprised that when they see that fire in your eyes, that they'll be willing to help you out even more. And tell you things, and teach you things, and show you things even more. Because they see that you're willing to work hard for what you want to do. And these guys, you know... They're in the business. They may know somebody that that has land for lease. They may be leasing land. Um, they may have a set of cows that, that they'll sell you at a good price. Um, but just talk to them. Just sit there and talk to them. And that, that you'll be surprised how far that can get you just by talking. The next thing you can do uh, is get in your car or your tractor, if that's what you're driving. That's a pretty neat tractor though, ain't it? But anyway, get in your car uh, and drive. Here in Central Texas, there's a bunch of landowners that just use their land for hunting. So drive around in your area, look for places that people don't have any cows on. Um, keep an eye on that place, see if anybody's using it. You'd be surprised how many you know ranches actually have absentee landowners um, and you can call your local tax office and find out who their owner is track them down and give them a call or better yet you know take them out for a cup of coffee one morning and and let them know just like you did with the extension agent just like you did with the guys at the cell barn you know let them know what your goals are what your plans are um what you're trying to do and like i said before you you talk to these guys you know talk to your local extension agent and find out the prices of lease land find out you know all that good stuff have that all mapped out before you go talk to the landowners and find out what your stocking rate is you know how many cows would i be able to run on this place if this guy says yes you know could i make it work could i get my start here and once you got once you got all that figured out you know then you can offer these guys a pretty fair price you know um I wouldn't offer them, unless it's super good land, I wouldn't offer them top dollar, you know, but offer them a fair price that, that, that gets them thinking about it. But also, you know, when you offer them that fair price, just because you think it's a good deal doesn't mean they're going to say yes. You know, what's the difference between you leasing it from them and Joe Blow that lives down the road that's been ranching for 40 years, that knows what he's doing. You see, you see what I'm saying? So that's when you've got to offer extra, you know. That's when you've got to offer, okay, hey, I'm going to do land improvements for you. Hey, I'm going to fix your fence. I'm going to keep your fence up. I'm going to work on your waters. I'm going to clear your brush. I'm going to make the look, make the place look good. You know, I'm not going to overgraze the place. 
let them know that you're going to treat the place like it's your own, that you're going to take care of it. Um, the way land prices are right now, that's a lot of money that these people, you know, don't want to just turn over to somebody that they don't trust, you know, to trash the place. And you're saying, yeah, but that's a lot of work, you know, promising that much. But nobody ever said that getting started ranching or ranching in general is easy, okay? It's, it's a lot of work. It's a ton of work. And there is my little Lincoln welder that has 25 hours on it. But anyway, hopefully up to this point, you've talked and met with enough people uh, to find lease land. And maybe you're lucky. Maybe it takes you a month to find a place after you've talked to these people and, and started meeting everybody. Or maybe it takes you a year. You know, who knows? Uh, it just kind of depends on your local area and um, how much work you're willing willing to put in um, to get to that point. But my point is, if that's something that you really want to do, you know, you really want to start ranching, then connecting with these people is the step you need to take. Um, it's sliding the scale in your direction. Um, you hear the saying, you are the five most people you hang around with. So you, if you hang out with five millionaires, chances are you're becoming a millionaire. Uh, if you hang out with five druggies, chances are you're gonna try drugs and become druggies. Um, so keep that in mind. And the next thing I would do is gonna take a little bit of money. I didn't say it was gonna be totally free, but I said that talking to people was gonna get you started, okay? Um, so it is gonna take a little bit of money. Don't just think one day you're going to magically wake up. Oh, I'm a rancher. You know, didn't put any money into it. Okay. It's going to take a little bit of money. Most ranchers, especially when they're starting out, have quote unquote in town jobs. And that hit help fits fit the bill. And that helps to fit the bill. Um, when you're getting started, um, so I thoroughly recommend having an in-town job. Um, and I thoroughly, 100% recommend not getting a loan for the cows. Um, you will greatly appreciate that um, the first time your loan payment comes due. So if at all possible, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But if at all possible, I highly suggest not getting a loan on the cows. Maybe that means you start small and buy just a few. That's fine. You can always expand, you know. The good thing is cows reproduce. So um, you will grow. And you know all the guys at the sale barn. You've gone, you've watched, you know what people are selling, you know what people are buying. Um, so those contacts you made, it's it's going to help when you go to buy cows. Uh, and maybe you don't buy them from the sale barn. Maybe you buy them from a rancher you've met. You can look online. You can talk to the people at the local feed store. Um, those guys know everybody, but by talking and meeting these people, um, uh, finding cows will probably be the easiest step that you're going to do. Uh, finding cows to buy, it, it's going to be pretty simple actually. And last, you've already got a tractor, you've got a trailer, you've got a truck, you've got pins, um, you've got a chute, you've got all the equipment, right? No, wrong. You've got to keep your overhead low. The only thing I suggest you have is a pickup, okay? Because it's pretty hard to ranch out of a Prius. If you've got a pickup, you can borrow your neighbor's trailer, okay? You can buy somebody that you've, or um, not buy. You can borrow somebody's trailer that you met at the sale barn, okay? 
Um, you can borrow panels from somebody to, to make a set of working pants to work them out of. If you need to feed a round bell, you know, throw it in the bed of your pickup, take it to the lease place, roll it out. You don't have to have a tractor. Equipment just makes everything easier. But at the same time, it makes it harder because it's more expensive. So starting out, you don't have to have it, okay? Keep your overhead low. And like I said, buying equipment, you know, having equipment makes everything easier. It doesn't make it possible. So <clears throat> save up over time, then buy your equipment as you go. You know, start small, buy as you go. If it comes down to you need equipment for a job, okay, there's, there's rental places, um, there's your neighbor down the road, there's somebody you've met along the way by talking that has a tractor that, that you can borrow or rent from them. The biggest lie that you hear is you need all this before you get started. You don't, okay? Um, by talking to your contacts, you can get all this stuff figured out. And as far as, as working them goes, the pins, everything, okay? <clears throat> by talking to these contacts that you've made, um, you know, go talk to your guys at the cell, bone, cell barn. Go talk to the guys at the feed store. They know cowboys that can come out. They can work your cows for you. They can doctor your cows for you. They can load your cows for you. If you can't find a trailer to, to borrow, they can haul your cows for you, okay? Yes, that takes away from your net profit. Um, but when you're starting out, you got to do what you got to do, okay, just to get it done. Um, and at least you're started, right? You can grow from there and go from there. This video could take another two hours tops, okay? Um, and all I'm saying is that networking with people, it helps, okay? Just talk your way into getting started. That's all it takes, okay? It takes a little bit of money. It takes a whole lot of work, a whole lot of time, okay? But that lie that, that's out there that, okay, you got to have all this. You got to buy all this. You got to have this much money, you know? It's just that. It's a lie, okay? It's hard. Don't get me wrong. But just talk your way into getting started ranch. The uh, average age of a rancher I actually looked this up earlier because <clears throat> i wanted to touch on it is 57 and a half years old right now that's american farmer rancher um 57 and a half years old okay it's not getting any younger and that's because the younger generation can't afford to get into it okay we can't make it pay we can't make the cows pay for the land pay for themselves pay for the equipment we can't make it pay okay so that average age just keeps going up and the younger generation cannot get into ranching but there's always a solution right um so like i said ranching it's not easy but if you have a passion for it, there's nothing better in the world um, to do. So don't let it hold you back that you don't have money. Get out, talk to people, start networking with people. Don't be shy about it. Um, you'll find out how good um, the people in this industry really are. And I am going to leave you with one thing before I go. I'm a great believer in luck. And I find the harder I work, the more of it I have. Thomas Jefferson said that. So I want to thank you all for um, sticking along with me in this little bit of a different video. Um, and I hope y'all have a good night. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope it helped y'all a little bit. Um, and good luck to everybody. You know, if you're trying to get started ranching, good luck. Just keep trying. Um, it's all worth it. I promise.